Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm David Goodman, and over there is John Lodowski. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. <coughs> Better than me today, apparently. <laughs> A little bit. All right. Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker 202 West Side Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585. They're your one-stop shop for all your hockey needs. Um, before we get into today's game, we have transactions. And they read as follows. Mark Jankowski loaned back to the return on loan off of emergency loan to the Admirals. Luke Prokop assigned to Atlanta. Um, not surprised by either one of those. Liam Foudy is on waivers currently for Nashville. Um, beyond that, uh, bit of an interesting development here with with everything going on. Yikes. Wonder what's going on there, but okay. I saw a transaction you rarely see in AHL. Nah. Suspended by team. Okay. Uh, for the uh, Iowa Wild. You normally don't see a lot of guys getting suspended by their own team. Right. You know you messed up. <laughs> <laughs> Your own team hates you now. All righty. Today the National Predators took on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um. <clears throat> and uh. With that, well, I'll turn it over to John because we're going to jump right into it. All right. Shots on goal in the first period. Both teams had eight shots. In the second period, Tampa Bay outshot Nashville 14 to 10. In the third period, Nashville outshoots Tampa Bay 12 to 11. And in total, Tampa Bay outshoots Nashville 33 to 30. On the faceoff circle, Tampa Bay was better by a little bit at 52.7%. The Nashville's 47.3%. On the power play, Tampa Bay goes 0 for 4 with 23 penalty minutes, while Nashville goes 2 for 3 with 13 penalty minutes. Nashville out hit Tampa Bay 19 to 17. Tampa Bay out blocked Nashville 16 to 15. Tampa Bay had 13 giveaways while Nashville had 11, and Nashville had nine takeaways to Tampa Bay's five. Oh. Scoring in the first period for Tampa Bay at the 13-32 mark was Barry Boulay, scoring his fifth of the year, assisted by Hagel, his 14th, and Sorelli, his seventh. Then on the power play at the 17-14 mark, Parsonen scores his fifth of the year, assisted by Tomasino, his eighth, and McDonough, his eighth. Scoring in the second was Phil Forsberg with his 14th, with an assist from Roman Yossi, his 14th, and Gustav Nyquist, his 15th. That was on the power play. It was a snapshot at the 237 mark. Sorry about that, John. I was reading something. Oh, no, you're good. <laughs> uh, it's kind of indicative to what we're going to be talking about in a second. So just kind of doing my homework here. Uh, then Ryan McDonough scores at the 423, or 432 mark, sorry. Uh, 432 mark, unassisted on the backhand. Um, then in the third period, uh, Roman Yoshi scores on a wrist shot with his sixth with an assist from Cole Smith, his sixth. Um... And then Yakov Trenton scores his sixth with an assist from Sherwood, his sixth. And that was scored on an empty net at the 13-13 mark. Preds win 5-1. to 
Um, but what we're going to talk about is the transition of Cole Smith from Hines to Brunette. Okay? Yeah. Last season, 69 games played, four goals, 13 assists, 17 points, minus three, 30, 60 penalty minutes, 60 penalty minutes. Okay? This year, 25 games played, four goals, six assists, set to, uh, 10 points already, <coughs> 33 penalty minutes, two shorthanded points, I think they're both assists. And his averaging time on ice is about 13 minutes per game. Um, last year it was 12 4 4. So he's actually getting more ice time this year than last year. Yeah. And with the speed and tempo at which they're playing, he's producing. All right. So I would like to see the hate on this man stop. He is getting better. Um from year one where he played one game and had no points. Year two where he had eight games and played and had three points. Oh, but everybody must hate him because, well, they got to hate something. The internet trolls of uh, Twitter and, you and Facebook and YouTube, you can kill, come at me all you want, but my stats, the, the statistics don't lie. And statistics will make you look like a fool every time if you don't read them properly. You're talking about a guy who's producing at a clip that you're going up in points, not down. All right. Matter of fact, the two games that he did not play in the last 11, the Preds lost. The Preds are nine and eleven, nine and two in their last eleven. That is insane. <coughs> so, if you want to find something to complain about, look down here at our officiating. Come find out what the AHL's officiating's like. You think you're frustrated there? Come watch LaRue get nine penalties a game because they keep jumping on him. And by jumping on him, I literally mean like they will, they literally do everything they can to hit the man. Before the play, after the play, during the play, away from the play. He doesn't even have the puck. He's on the bench and they're trying to, they're yapping at him. Some of you need to stop sitting behind your keyboard and actually go to a game. Look pretty empty tonight. Just saying. If I had the money, I'd have been down there. Some of y'all live there and don't even go. <coughs> Oh, oh, talk about Austin Watson. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Yakov Trenin. Um, Then uh, after that, shoots the puck down the ice, hits Jeremy Lazan in the leg. Jeremy Lazan goes to the trainer's room, Um, is listed as week to week. Yeah, that, that was uncalled for. I didn't like that at all. Um, as a guy who did defend him upon what everything that happened, um, look, I know there's good in the man's heart. I I know that because I've met him. You know, and when I sit here and say that sometimes you play against guys like that, and sometimes you have a bad night. But you're responsible for everything you do. There's no wiggling out of this one. The carrier hit to the head. Now this. League, if you don't start looking at dirty plays amongst the league, you're going to have guys headhunting all the time. 
And that's what we're trying to get out of the game, and you're doing nothing about it. Kaprizov literally injured Carrier. He has missed three straight games, and you've done nothing. Now another injury to our team. Watch you do nothing. Don't like it. Do something about it. See, if you're going to sit here and say, well, we're going to fight for slashing, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do that, but the legit dirty plays, we're going to do nothing. I've seen more slew footing this year than anything. And that's not right. It's not health. It's not safe. People get hurt doing that. Yeah. This game is so quick, you can't be slew footing, guys. For those of you, if you want to know what slew footing is, is where when the guy, you take a guy and you push it backwards and you sweep his legs. It's basically a leg sweep. You know, it, it's just, I, I'm sick of the dirty play. I'm sick of the poor officiating. And I think that's hockey as a general this year. The officiating been pretty poor. Um, that no goal call in the first was pretty horseshit. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Um, his stick made contact with him outside of the paint. That's not goalie interference. If anything, that's interference on the goalie. If you want to call it what it is, it's slashing. Whoops. You called a goal off because the goalie slashed the guy out of the paint. Yeah, Lee, you need to clean this up. We're supposed to leave the best hockey league in the world, yet we have the worst viewing ratings this year that we've had in the last 15. Nobody's watching hockey right then again. Nobody's watching the NBA either, but that's beside the point. <laughs> the NBA's play-in tournament has the lowest viewing rating ratership. It's actually lower than the NHL currently. I looked at it this morning. Three NHL games, and one of them was the Buffalo Sabres had a higher viewer rating than than the uh, Lakers Suns game that was on ESPN the other day. What's that tell you? This playing tournament, in season tournament, nah. <coughs> eh. The NBA is just trying to give LeBron another championship since he can't win a regular season one again. Uh, but nonetheless, enough of me bashing on the NBA since, you know, that's my go-to whenever I want to bash on the NHL because they're doing things just to get to that level and that it's just as bad. Um, Before we get into anything, else uh per the governor board of governors meeting this this last week um the nhl draft to be held on the 28th and 29th of june um yeah. what is uh <clears throat> and it's gonna be held at the sphere In Vegas. That ought to be trippy. <laughs> like, on a real note, that ought to be trippy. Um, so, John, what's your thoughts on the, uh, also the NHL salary cap going up by 4.25? Oh, I hadn't heard about that yet. Okay. Yeah, four point two five million. I think it's a good boost. Um, only reason it's not fully gone up is because the Arizona Coyotes have yet to fully pay escrow. We're waiting on the Coyotes.
Their owner can barely pay taxes. Why do you think they're going to pay me able to pay an escrow? <sighs> but, yeah, so that's part of that as well. Um, Let's take a look here. What else we got? What for news? Um, if I read right earlier, Alex Ovechkin got an assist for his, I think, fifteen hundredth point. Correct. Uh, he becomes the sixteenth player overall to become a one thousand five hundred points. Um. <laughs> Uh, Clay Greg to have surgery out for the rest of the season. Um, Blue uh, Islanders score seven against the Blue Jackets. Touchdown versus a field goal. Um, the Detroit Red Wings found a way to blow a four nothing lead against the Sharks and lose in overtime. Six to five. Um, oh, how many does he have? Let's bring us fourteen. Fourteen. Fourteen to put him at... that is not what I want. Well, Forsberg is in a one, two, three, four, five, six way tie for for fifth place in on um, goal score. <coughs> There's a bunch of dudes who are tied with seventeen. Bunch of dudes who are um, Kucherov and Ryan Harder. Tied with 17 goals. And Aaron and Matthews are tied with 16 goals. Crosby, uh, Hyman, and Connor at 15. Mil JT Miller, Postradoc, Phil Forsberg, Frank Vertano, and Chris Kreider all have 14 goals. But Philip Forsberg is in the top 20 in goal scoring right now yeah. in the NHL. Um, is this the Forsberg that we've been kind of trying to find the last couple of years? And is Ryan O'Reilly's um, appearance on this team that much of an impact? Um, I think Forsberg's starting to turn it off recently. Um. O'Reilly's kind of plateaued a little bit. No, I'm talking about O'Reilly's uh, arrival in Nashville has upped Forsberg's game. Um, I think it has a little bit. Along with Nyquist, having having guys that he can rely on. Yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, with Hines, every game, his line was changing. So, I mean... <laughs> Right, it's nice to see some lines staying the same for once. It, it's a consistency, which is showing on the ice as well. Right. Um. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but did you notice Yossi's playing on his offside lately? No. Yeah, he's been playing on the right side instead of the left side. Huh. I mean... Nashville's got a lot of good defensemen on that left side. So moving Yossi over shouldn't be a big deal. 
Not to mention it would put him on a strong hand side if he's on that side of the ice. Yeah. So more opportunity for offense. Just find more opportunity, more, you know, just noticing the little tiny details amongst the game. Um, but as I said, nine out of their last 11. Nashville currently sits after today in the standing. They are fifth, tied for fourth with Arizona, who has been doing very. They, they, eh. they've been doing pretty good. Um, you know, uh, looking at it, uh, the Preds are a plus four. Uh, and their goals versus goals for versus goals against differential. Um, you know, uh, I think that 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 is a good thing. Um, you know, looking at the league right now, uh, not really shocked to see the you know the top five teams as the top five teams: uh, Vegas, the Rangers, the Bruins, the Kings, and the Avalanche. Now, those are your top five. Um. Not surprised at all to see any of those. Uh, the, then it goes Dallas, Vancouver, Winnipeg, Florida, Detroit. The only shocker there is Vancouver and Detroit. Yeah. Um, then you get by beyond that, you got Toronto, uh, Philadelphia, the Islanders, the Hurricanes. The Hurricanes yesterday had a flubber of a game. Um, they got waxed by Carol by uh, Edmonton, and I think it was like in the first period too. Yeah, it was like one, two, three, four goals in the first period, one in the second, and one in the third. Yeah, they lost six to one. Um, you think that? Teams who kind of just stay stagnant on how they build um, have uh, made decisions like Carolina without having a EC or AHL affiliate, a proper AHL affiliate. Um, do you think that that is starting to hard, uh, come back to bite them in the butt? A little bit. I mean, when you're sending guys all over, it makes it difficult. Um, team camaraderie also takes an impact on there because when you don't have those guys, same guys in the locker room, and then, you know, you have a guy coming from one team and he could have played the other guy the other day and there was a cheap hit and, and you know, it, 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 it does make for a very um, chaotic kind of system. Yeah. Um, just saying there. Uh So, uh, what else we got here? Uh, uh, Toronto goaltender wall to miss time. Um, He's been doing pretty well. Uh, Martin Jones will be getting the call up. Um, and Ilya Samsonov has the flu. So he'll be out for some time now as well. Samsonov did skate morning skate. Um, Nashville Predators did activate Tommy Novak. Um, oh, I, got, I should check that. Let's see what Novak did do for ice time. Novak, ice time, 12 minutes, 55 seconds. Uh, minus one, he was 50% on the faceoff. First game back in almost a month. No big complaints here. Uh, moving on forward. Um, On to 
to borrow? Where we have the Milwaukee Admirals versus the Iowa Wild in Iowa. Um, and I believe the Gladiators played them. I believe. I'm checking that right now. Okay. Yep, they play at the Savannah Ghost Pirates. Okay, so we have a double for you tomorrow. Um, as it sits right now, the Iowa Wilds are in well the hot seat right behind the Admirals at five hundred. Um, they have won th the, their last three. Uh, Jasper Wallstead, their goaltender, leading the way. As I just said, one of their players had been suspended by the team. Uh, defenseman landed kosher. Um, no games played. No statistics. Um, nothing. There's literally nothing on this guy. Um, if Foudy get does clear and he gets sent here, um, who gets the axe? I don't know. I almost want to say Gasavage. Mm -hmm. Ow. Alrighty, so there's that. Um uh, Jasper Wallstead was announced as the AHL goaltender of the week um for last week's two and one record that he held. Um <laughs> nah. Atlanta, after having a great start to their season, find themselves sitting in 10th place at a five, also on a four-game losing skid. In their last 10, they are one and nine. Yeah, it's been rough for Atlanta lately. Um, the Savannah Ghost Pirates are 6, 11, and 2. Um, so not much better there for them. Uh, so, uh, we will see more of that tomorrow. Thank you all for watching. That is all we have for today. Um, so yeah. All I got to say is, stop Craig Smith hating. I'm just kidding. It's Cole Smith. Trevor Smith. Mike Smith. Matt Smith. Larry Smith. There's so many Smiths. <laughs> Believe it or not, there's been nine different players with the last name Smith to play for the National Predators. So, Jeremy Smith. <laughs> All righty. Um... Uh, on a note, leave Cole alone. He's actually having a productive season. Would you like him to go back to his old ways? Just saying. <coughs> so, 